interview day. <laughs> We're basically famous. <laughs> We're so, the leads. What up? <laughs> <laughs> We're the leads of backstage. Right, so bye. Okay, so bye bye. Do you know? No. Okay. So, <laughs> so bye bye birdie is basically I don't know if anyone knows anything about Elvis Presley. It's the fact that he got drafted while he was still really famous, and so this is kind of the representation of that because it's like the '50s, '60s, or whatever. So Conrad Birdie is like a huge star, and it's about how he got drafted in the military. And they're kind of using that as kind of propaganda so Albert, the songwriter, can make money. And, um, yeah, so they're just trying to make the, as much money as he can. Albert's trying to make as much money as he can so he can become an English teacher and leave the town. And Conrad Birdie can just go to the army. Bye-bye, Birdie. Yeah, so it's, it's about how all the fangirls sing songs about, like, we're going to miss... We're gonna miss Birdie. Bye bye, Birdie. There's yeah. like a little, there's a little scene about it where they're just singing a bye bye Birdie song. It's like goodbye, Conrad Birdie. That's what that's about. So it's like propaganda almost. Yeah. Like about Elvis Presley. So is Elvis yeah. Presley like in the play? No. The real Elvis Presley is in the play. Yes, we actually. <laughs> yes. Are you kidding me? No. We're not kidding you. That's why we're yeah. pushing so much for people to come to this. Movie. We need Elvis to be here. No, no but we have um, an actor from Anderson University that's playing. Yeah. Um, Conrad's part, and yeah. he's uh, pretty decent. Yeah. So there's a, somebody in the play that's not from high school. No. Yeah. Right. Conrad Birdie is not from the high school. Conrad Birdie is the guy's name. Conrad Birdie is the guy. Yeah. The character. It's, name. it's just oh, the, the representation. The character. Yeah. Name. I thought you meant the Conrad Birdie. Like, no. The guy's name. No. 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 Like, this is perfect. No. No. Conrad Birdie. No. Conrad Birdie is, Birdie is like the representation of Elvis. Because he got, Conrad got drafted, and the parallel is that Elvis got drafted as well. Okay. So it's kind so of about that. So what do you guys do? Like, what is, what is your role for the play? Do you want me to go? Okay. I'm a stage manager, so what I do is I basically sit backstage, and I have to follow along on my script and make sure that props get on and off correctly and on time so that the show keeps moving, moving smoothly. And on stage right, that's the stage um, that I stage manage, it is in control of rails, and rails are the curtains that are up um, above the stage. So they bring action down and cover action, um, bring like different set pieces on and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I do sound, and so I have a whole team of people. I have my mics, and I have my actual sound crew. Um, my actual sound crew is Jeremy Mang, who used to go to high school here, and then he went to Anderson College, uh, and then now he comes back to work on the plays in the musicals, um, and so he helps out every time. He's a professional, so he knows basically everything. And we have Daniel Ehrman. He's in the sound booth with me, and I'm training him so he can do it by himself next year. And then backstage, on stage left, not Chelsea's side, uh, that's Katie Stitchworth's side, um, they do... Um, Mike's and it's usually Draven and Draven's helping out but he's actually in the show this time so we have Haley Webb and we have Ashley, Ashley Leach um, doing it and this is one of their first times doing sound so it's it's pretty tough because it's a very sound ridden show it's a huge huge cast there's like 45 characters I think there's a lot of cast yeah yeah, yeah. we counted it's 45 really characters so, okay if there's 45 people out on stage how many people are backstage well, characters. Not all at once, yeah, but, yeah. But are you guys playing any part, or is like, are you the small team that makes them look really good? You know what I mean. We're all small teams. Yeah, we we have lights. We have um, and lights kind of has like two different teams, like the actual light booth, which makes the show run smoothly with the lights that are going on stage, like different cues. And then we have spots, which which actually like follow the actors so that they have a spotlight. Then there's sound, like Sammy said. There's a sound booth at the back, and then there is a sound booth at stage left, mm -hmm. which is in charge of, like, miking yeah. um, characters and yeah. things like Mike that. Yeah, them, changing batteries, anything. And they can do it really fast. Yeah. <laughs> really that, I feel like sound is the most difficult, but then we have run crew, and run crew is, like, taking props on and off, making sure curtains get closed at the right time. Just kind of also kind of like a catch-all because you kind of have to help with costumes or if someone's like, I can't find my prop, you've got to be like, oh, I have to be the mom backstage right now and like find a prop. So, yeah. okay, so who is the mom backstage? Stage managers. 
So are you the mom? I'm the mom. Stage. Yeah. I've had people come up to me and be like, I ripped my pants. And I'm like, you ripped your pants? And they're like, and I have to go on in like five minutes. And then I'm like. That's Sebastian. Yes. That was yeah. <laughs> and then I have to be like, okay, well, let's find a way to get you some pants. Okay, so what is the craziest thing that's ever happened, like, backstage that, like, nobody knows about, but, like, the crew? Like, the the really fast dress changes. Kira's dress change, I heard, was insane. Yes. Kira's dress change, I feel like, should have been on Ripley's Believe It or Not. That was incredible. I literally had to get her changed. I had to change her shoes, her dress. She had to have like a garter on mm -hmm. with like a gun tucked in her side. And I had to put a cigarette in her mouth, like a fake one. Yeah. And that was done in like, less than a minute. Yeah, because I was actually doing the voiceover for that. It's like, <laughs> like in music, because it's all instrumental at the beginning of the song, which is when she's changing, because it's just a transition. It's I think like maybe, 16 bars if that it's just basically three lines of just normal speaking voices to get her like completely undressed redressed and out on stage to sing a song the the dress changes in this aren't as bad as like um what musical that was nine to five yeah that was nine to five um as nine to five <clears throat> but the set pieces are the biggest struggle for the show because they're it's a really nice set like the yeah. advanced tech and I think just the technical theater because yeah. they're combined this year um, or this trimester. Um, they did a really good job building the set and like Taylor's put a lot of work. It's probably like his baby right now because yeah. it's a good set. Yeah, the set moves. It's a pain in the butt, but it is so worth it. Like backstage, yeah. I'm like stressing so much, mm -hmm. but I'm like, it's worth it because this set is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It, and for as, as big as like the pieces are huge, like there's like, there's like a house scene and mm -hmm. some there's just like another version of a house I guess I'm not sure what telephone it is. we call the it telephone. yeah yeah so there's two different actual huge size sets and they just I'm guessing they roll I don't even know what they, they roll do. on and off yeah and I don't even know where they go it does not look like there is room anywhere but they can move it so quickly like during a scene just a scene change so about a minute they can get a new set on new ones off people on it and it changes completely. It goes to a house, yeah. to like a hangout spot, mm -hmm. to a train station. Oh, icebox too, yeah. Yeah, there's just, it's like <clears throat> one stage, but so many different settings. So yeah. I think that's the, probably the coolest part about like being backstage yeah. this year is like, I think the set's really awesome. Yeah. The actors aren't as hectic because we have so many of them, so mm -hmm. they can mostly take care of themselves. Yeah, they, they know how to help. I mean, I just can't imagine, I can't imagine being backstage like a Friday night opener or, th or whatever your opening oh, night Wednesday, is like, yeah. like I would be freaking out like mm. trying to get everything like I know you guys practice like all the time mm -hmm. and like, for one week repetition, repetition, repetition. we had a five hour yeah we had to be there at 3.30 yesterday and we were yeah. there we only the, ca the actors actually work for like six to eight weeks on the show but the crew only comes in the Saturday before Monday Tuesday Wednesday's the show Nothing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday we strike everything. You just, you pull it together. In a yeah. week. Yeah. Yes. Tech week, whenever we were like, it's tech week. Yeah. Things are getting real for like There's the a lot production. Of yeah. Tech week is basically just being like, this is when the show's going to come together. And yeah. hopefully it comes together yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah. Tech day is the most stressful because we're there from about 10 a.m. to like 8 or 9 p.m. Yeah. And we're just running the Q to Q. Uh, we have the orchestra there at some point. Band we have pit. like one or two breaks. Yeah, we have the Q to Q, the fast Q to Q, the orchestra, lunch, dinner. That's about the whole day. You spend the entire Saturday there. And then. You guys yeah. are both seniors, right? Yeah. Correct. Okay, so senior year. This is pretty, this is like, the, this is it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you guys feel? Like your overall life. How has play and how has Mr. Taylor affected you know, your outlook on life, your, what you're going to do in the future, looking back four years ago when you guys were coming in as freshmen? Like, tell me about this whole process. You go first if you want to. Um, well, I came in at the end of my freshman year and she came in her sophomore year. Yeah, I came in my sophomore year and Kayla Hackard was stage right manager. And she... They kind of needed a stage manager for whenever she was not going to be there. 
And so Taylor was kind of like, he wanted Lennon to stage manage, but he kind of wanted Lennon on stage. And so he, I just kind of got put in the position because Kayla Hackard was like, I think Chelsea would be a really good stage manager. Hmm. And at first I was like, no way I can be a stage manager, like, because I don't have the voice for it. I don't like being pushy. But Taylor's always, he'll always remind cast, um, Chelsea's not here to be your friend. Like, she's here to get the show, like, rolling. Mm -hmm. So if she's mean to you, don't be mean to her. Like, she's doing it for your yeah. benefit. So he kind of helped me, like, have a voice, I guess. Like, be able to tell, like, what needs to be done and not feel ashamed about it. Um, and it's helped me a lot with, like, leadership skills, I feel like, and being able to speak out. Because, like, during notes, you've got to, you just got to be real. Got to be brutally honest. <laughs> yeah. And um, that's not something that I like to do, but theater kind of helped me with that. Yeah. For me, I used to do the Clinton County Youth Theater stuff from age 7 to, like, 12. And then I got into high school, and I'm like, I'm not going to do theater. Like, oh, that's in my past. Like, I'm not going to do that. Um, and then the fall play of our freshman year came around, like, Safe House, Safe House Sabotage. Um, and, like, everyone was talking about it. They're like, oh, it's so awesome. And I'm like, I don't want to act. I don't like to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and my dad always did sound at our church, and I always loved watching him do it. And I'm like, I don't want to act, but like, I want to help. And um, so that that our freshman year for the musical, I was actually supposed to move to Illinois. And um, so when I went to go help, I was like, I want to do sound. And Taylor's like, you can't do sound because you're going to move. There's no point in teaching you if you're just going to leave. It's a lot of work, which it, it definitely is a ton of work. Um, and then about halfway through, at least uh, yeah, about halfway through the week, we found out that I wasn't moving to Illinois. It was unlikely that I was going to um, if I lived with someone else um, in my family. And so he let me do sound. And Lauren Ehrman was the most, she was the nicest mentor that I've ever had in my entire <laughs> life. She's an angel son from heaven. Um, and she was so helpful. And Jeremy being there, it, it tugged at my heartstrings the whole week. Every single, every single tech week, it is so heartbreaking. But the relief that you get on like the last show mm -hmm. is like, it's like I'm home. Like here we are, I did it. Definitely. I succeeded at something. Especially if you can keep up your homework throughout the entire week. Like Monday you feel through, really accomplished. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your, your life feels complete. And it's just like that every single time. It comes up to tech week and you're like, oh gee, like it's coming up. The musical's coming up, and you get there, we're like in the mode, and then the week's over, and you're like, wow, it's May. And then now this year, instead of it just being like, oh, it's May, it's like, I'm graduating and going to college, and I'm going to Ball State, and so is Chelsea, <laughs> and we're not going to see each other. It's <laughs> unlikely that we'll see each other. And that's, it's so weird. But just going back into theater, it may not have been acting, but it was doing something that I found a hobby in. It's just so nice because... Theater is kind of for the outcasts that want to fit in, and this is your place to fit in. Right. Because no matter what, no matter what you do in your free time, and no matter who you're with, when it comes to theater, no one cares. And it, it, you always hear about that in like the movies and like shows. They're like, oh, like theater people are so accepting, but it's honestly so true. It does not matter who you are. Right. We have a variety of people. We have super sporty people, and we have like very, very theater people, and we we just have all different kinds of people that just come together. And we're like, let's make this show happen. And at the end of the show, you have a new friend. And that's always really nice to come out of it. Like, that sounds so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that that's right there sounds like a community. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? like, it's so crazy how, like, people can be in, like, like, there's so many people in high school that don't, like, never get to feel that way. You know what yeah. I mean? They never get to experience, like, being with a team. Like, whether yeah. it's, like, the track team, basketball team, like, the play group, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I've always thought the like the play. You mentioned play people. I always thought that play people were very close. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they were always like they got along great. Like maybe yeah. not like, but they were there to make the production. They put it on, and it was a wonderful. Time. You get a lot of unexpected friends. Yeah. And you sure. can you can like it like with being in a sport, you have to be like athletically you know, inclined or what whatever. Like really training hard, and it takes a long, long time. But with theater, you can just kind of step into it, and you can become friends with the most unexpected people. Like Malik is like a three-sport, two-sport athlete, yeah. and he was one of the leads in 9 to 5. Yeah. And he made a ton of friends, and he, he became even closer with me, and I haven't talked to him much since like middle school. Um, is there like anything else you guys want to say? Anything you want to like take the freshman 
or your, oh, your past to, self or anything like that? To anybody that doesn't do anything in school, like sports, or you feel like you know you're not good at sports, or you're not good at maybe like joining academic teams, or maybe like speech club things like that. Theater is your catch-all for people like that because they're so accepting. And like Sammy said, you can all come together with so many people, and it's just so awesome. Like at the end of each production, we have this thing. It's called Circle of Tears because usually people end up crying. We're theater kids, especially during the musical because it's like graduation <laughs> time. Right, and we just yeah. basically tell each other like. If there's someone there and you want to tell them how they've impacted like you or your time in theater, that's the time to do it. And it's just basically like a big circle of appreciation yeah. and just like voicing like how theater has changed you or how much it means to you. So I think theater is a really important aspect of high school and I would encourage like anybody that wants to do it, do it because they're so accepting, they won't judge you, they'll just take you under your wing and be weird with you. And it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, I would say definitely incoming freshmen or just anybody at the high school, if you have any interest in theater and you have the time for one week, twice a year, to just dedicate your life to one production, then I think absolutely you should take it, especially if you've done the, um, the youth theater stuff, because it's very similar to that, except these people guaranteed that they wanted to do it because they had six to eight weeks of doing it on their own and you know like it's if you want to do it you should do it because for me I went from actor to crew and in high school I've met people that did the same and I've met people that went crew to acting like Chase Cotton is one of the leads and I know he's been he's done rails he's been run crew I'm pretty sure um, there's a there's a spot for anybody and if you have any interest try out and if you have any interest, come to the crew meeting. <laughs> call out. <laughs> crew call out. <laughs> <laughs> the crew call out, definitely. Meeting. <laughs> and, you know, if you think you want to go into acting and you don't make it in, during the tryout, do the crew call out. Show Taylor what you can do. Show him and prove him that you know what you're doing, that you can, that you can show that you're dedicated. Because being dedicated is probably one of the most important parts of theater is it's just taking the time to just step away from everything else step away from like even even the drama because we we can get drama in the theater like that's just part of it but it's a matter of taking that away and say this is tech week we can have drama after because right, right now it's just for the show so i say definitely try it just do it if you if you have the littlest interest just do it make your dreams come true Shiloh Just Bob. do it. Just <laughs> do it. You guys are good. All right. Thanks.